the next step is to attach, basically start the assembly. So I'm going to put that there and I'm going to put this here. Um, so I need to do that. The way that you do this or the way that I do this is with rubber cement. It seems to work pretty well, or contact cement. Um, it seems to work pretty well. Um, the process for applying this stuff is you put a thin coat on each surface that you want to attach and then you let it sit for about 15 minutes and then you attach it. You don't put it on there and then immediately put it together. You have to let it dry, let it get dry and tacky um, before you, you put the two halves together. So this is basically the process. You just kind of paint this stuff on And then you just let it wait. Let it sit for 10 minutes. 15. Okay, one of the things I'm going to have to do before I assemble the this piece with the other pieces is attach this. Because once they're attached, I obviously can't get the, the punch and everything else in there that I need to get in there. So I've flipped this over and I've punched the underside because it's going to go in there like that. And I've marked them like so. So now I just need to punch... The, uh, punch them in the correct place. The problem with this is that it's pretty close to the center, so you, it might be off a little bit when you do it, but um, it should be pretty close. It helps often to punch it from both sides. To get that little piece out. This may be just because I have a fairly poor quality tool here, but um, maybe I just need to get sharper ones. But um, there's the holes, and now the way you attach this, which is a little odd on this one because you're having to do it kind of hidden. The way I do it is I take these washers that have, or I'm sorry, these rivets that. Um, are flat on one side more or less and those will go on the inside because I don't want the blade to really hit them too much and since they're flat they don't I don't think the blade hits them too much um, and then so those go in like that and these rivet heads go on top like so and then the way that you're you do this you have this little, at least in this little cheap kit, <coughs> you have a little anvil on the bottom. You have this little hammer on the top. You're supposed to use a, like a dead blow hammer or leather mallet, but I just use a regular hammer. I haven't had any problems with it. And then that is on there and I've tested these a little bit and they're stronger than you might think. So they're not they're not ever coming off. So but then the, this one uh, this next one's a little trickier because you don't have access to the top. So the way I do this one is I put the cap on it. I try to, it's a little hard. And then I put this side in here. I found this from the top. That way you don't get too much of a mark on, on this thing from that. And you've got that attached. Now it's not held snug because it's just being held down here. And so the next step is to attach the two that will look like this. 
when they're in there. And the way that you do this, at least the way that I do this, is I drill these with a drill press since I can't punch it from the top. So I'll drill the holes with the drill press all the way through and then um, and then use the rivets. You, you know, use these two things to attach it together. Because it's a longer piece, it's going through three pieces of leather, you have to use the longest um, rivets. So you'll need the, the long ones as well as the medium and the short ones probably. So remember that you need pretty much all the different sizes rivets to do the project this way. So I'm going to go drill those and then come back. Okay, I've got the holes drilled in it, so now all I have to do is put the rivets through. Okay, I'm going to put this last, the back piece on it. You have to be really careful when you attach these together because um, once they've touched, that's pretty much it. Um, you can pull them, you can rip them apart, but it's uh, it's not pretty. So you want to try to get that as lined up as you possibly can the first time, because you're really not going to have a second shot at it. Now, at least in my case, it's not going to be a picture perfect fit there, um, so you can trim off the excess with a knife or you can try to sand it down with like a belt sander or something like that and that can work too. Some of these pieces, especially the inner liner, tends to get a little bit uh, off so um, you'll wind up having to you know trim and stuff a little bit but shouldn't be too bad. And I'm going to go do that. I'm going to cut some of this off with a knife and I'm going to grind some of it down, but um, when I come back I'll hopefully have a little bit better fit. So I just got done sanding this off. As you can see it's definitely a different color, but it uh, it gets it all down in uniform. Now I don't know if you can really see it, but one of the things that this causes is here on the edges you'll get a lip little very unattractive lip that you don't want. So what I do for that is I take the razor knife and I just kind of trim that off. Okay, I've trimmed this out. Um, I'm going to just cut that little lip off. And now, the thing is, of course, you don't probably want to just see that rough edge. Um, I don't. And so, I've read a lot about different techniques for doing this. Some of the real primitive methods of doing this are uh, I saw some recommendations for taking an antler horn and rubbing it across it some different things like that and so the uh, and then there's some machines even that you can buy specifically made for edging leather um, what I wound up falling upon was having a burnishing wheel one of two ways either have a having a burnishing wheel with some paraffin wax stuff on it and then rubbing that across and it basically heats it up and burnishes it and puts a coat of wax on it and that works reasonably well and then another method that I, I have used is to uh, take a spinning block of wood that's been that's been rounded, so basically it's like something on a lathe or something like that, or you could even do it on a drill press and putting paraffin and wax on that, and then just kind of pushing it into it and rubbing it across. And the idea is to heat it up and to kind of melt that wax uh, and kind of almost burn it in to the surface. Um, and it, that it does make it definitely look a lot better in, in my opinion 